this video i am going to talk about class 11 physics chapter thermodynamics now what is thermodynamics thermodynamics is a branch of physics which deals with the concepts of heat and temperature heat is nothing but the energy which is in flow between two points which have temperature difference now temperature is nothing but a unit which measures the degree of hotness or coldness of an object so thermodynamics is a branch with the which deals with the concepts of heat and temperature heat is nothing but a form of energy and we will in greater depth deal about heat in the coming slide thermodynamics also deals with how heat is converted from one form to another now why do we have to learn thermodynamics if you see around you a lot of processes and phenomena have energy exchange taking place in them so in order to really understand about these phenomena and procedures we need to learn thermodynamics you can take a lot of examples around you like the heat engine the refrigerator the various chemical reactions in these processes you see that there is an exchange of heat so in order to understand better these thing processes we need to learn thermodynamics now thermodynamics is a macroscopic science by macroscopic science i mean that it deals only with the system as a whole it does not consider into account how the constant of the system it does not take into account the constants of the system means how the system is how the constant particles of the system is distributed and so on it only deals with the system as a whole now thermodynamics deals with only macroscopic properties now by macroscopic property i mean that properties which give the information of the system as a whole means it it gives some information about the system but about the system as a whole it does not have any information about how the constant particle is distributed or how the constant particle is oriented oriented so so some of the macroscopic properties which we deal in thermodynamics is pressure volume temperature and so on and these are the macroscopic variables which you already know and we will encounter a lot more macroscopic variables or properties in the coming slides now before moving on i will just briefly explain some of the important terms which we will use throughout this video so what is a system a system is a thing which is under observation for example here in this case you see a box which have air molecules inside it so we are observing this box with air molecules so this box with the air molecule is our system and the thing which surrounds the box is the surrounding the boundary of the system with the surrounding is called the wall so this thick black line is the wall and the air molecules inside this box is our system and the surrounding is the space around the box now what is an adiabatic wall so adiabatic wall is an insulating wall which does not allow the transfer of energy or heat so in this case if this thick black line is an adiabatic wall that means that there is no heat exchange or energy exchange between the surrounding and the system now what is if the case if the wall is a diathermic wall diathermic wall is a wall which allows the exchange of energy or heat to take place between the system and the surrounding so if this box had an diathermic wall then there would be exchange of energy and heat between the surrounding and the system now since we know what is a system let's move on to 
towards macroscopic and microscopic status. Now consider two systems here, system A and system B with uh, gas molecules inside it. Now these two systems have the same volume, pressure, temperature and total energies. But if you see the picture closely, you can see that in A, the gas molecules are uniformly distributed, whereas in B, the gas particles are more towards the left side. Since these two systems, system A and system B, have the same volume, pressure, temperature and total energy, they are said to have the same macro state. As I said, macro, macroscopic variables are variables which gives the information of the system as a whole. So, volume, pressure, temperature and, and total energy of the two systems are the same. That means they are macroscopically same. So, they are said to have the same macro state. But, if you look at the individual particles, these particles have these particles are distributed uh, differently in these two systems these th particles can have different position and velocities in these two systems so as a result we say that a and b are two different microstates because microscopically the distribution of the constituents of system a and b are different so, what we conclude here is that if they have the same macroscopic variables like volume, pressure, temperature and total energy, then they are said to be in the same macroscopic state. But if, if, if there is a difference in the distribution of the particles, then we say that these two systems are in two different microstates. Let us now discuss about what is meant by a thermal equilibrium. I hope that all of you may be knowing what does a mechanical equilibrium means. A system is said to be in mechanical equilibrium when the net torque and force acting on that system is zero. But Thermal equilibrium is quite different from mechanical equilibrium. A system is said to be in thermal equilibrium if its macroscopic variables does not change with time. By macroscopic variables, here I mean the pressure, temperature, volume and the total energy of the system does not change with time. A system's state of equilibrium depends on the surrounding and nature of the world. So, in order to really understand what this means, let us consider a real life situation. You have a cup of hot tea in a room. So, as you know, the hot tea has a higher temperature than the room. As a result, there exists an heat flow from the hot tea to the surrounding. Now, if you wait for a long time, the temperature of the tea comes down to the temperature of the surrounding. So, when this cup of tea comes down to the temperature of the surrounding, there is no further change in temperature of the cup of tea. So, we say that the cup of tea is in equilibrium with the room. Now, assume a case where the cup of tea already has the temperature of that of the surrounding. In this case, there is no exchange of heat between the cup of tea and the room. So, so the state of equilibrium depends on the surrounding and the nature of the world. So, to, in order to understand this better, consider a case here. We have two systems, system A and system B. System A is in have the pressure P1 and temperature T1 and system B has temperature T2 and pressure P2. 
now if the wall between these two system is diathermic that is if diathermic means that exchange of energy can take place between these two system now if we allow the exchange of energy between these two system for some time you can see that after some time the pressure and temperature of these two system changes the temperature of the first system becomes p1 dash and temperature t1 dash and the pressure of system 2 becomes p2 dash and temperature becomes p2 dash now once if this has reached equilibrium then this p1 dash t1 dash and p2 dash t2 dash will not change with time so if this pressure and temperature remains constant then we can say that these two systems have reached equilibrium now if the wall between these two state was adiabatic that is there is no exchange of heat between these two system then the pressure and temperature of the system will remain the same and the temperature and pressure of the system too will also remain the same that means they are already in equilibrium but they are not in equilibrium with each other okay so if there is an exchange of heat energy between two system then the pressure and temperature of the system will change and at last it will attain a temperature and pressure that is p1 dash and t1 dash in the case of system 1 p2 dash and t2 dash in the case of system 2 which does not change with time so whenever a macroscopic variable like pressure temperature volume and energy of the system does not change we say that the system is in thermal equilibrium now we will discuss about zeroth law of thermodynamics before moving on to the statement of the zeroth law of thermodynamics consider three system here system a system b system c and these system have gas molecules inside them now system c has an diathermic wall between system c and system a and there is a diathermic wall between system c and system b but the wall between system a and system b is adiabatic that is there can't be any heat exchange or exchange of energy between system a and system b but since the wall between system c and system a is diathermic there can be exchange of heat heat and energy between system a and system c similarly there can be exchange of heat and energy between system b and system c now system a has temperature ta system b has temperature tb and system c has temperature tc now let us look into the statement of zeroth law of thermodynamics zeroth law of thermodynamics states that two system in thermal equilibrium with the third system separately are in thermal equilibrium with each other so let us understand the statement the statement says that if two systems are in thermal equilibrium with third system separately that means system a is in thermal equilibrium with system c and system b is in thermal equilibrium with system c separately then according to zeroth law of thermodynamics it states that the system a is in thermal equilibrium with system b so exchange of heat can take place takes place between system a and c and between system c and b and if system a is in thermal equilibrium with c and system b is in thermal equilibrium with system c even though there doesn't take place a um, heat energy between system A and system B, according to zeroth law of thermodynamics, system A and system B are in thermal equilibrium. So, this is what zeroth law of thermodynamics states. Now, this law brings out the concept of temperature. Now, system A is in thermal equilibrium with system C. So, if two systems are in thermal equilibrium, there should be some variable which should not 
which should not which should be same for both of the system and this thermodynamic variable which is equal to both the system is temperature so if system a and system c are in thermal equilibrium that means the temperature of the system a and the temperature of system c are the same that is ta is equal to tc now if system b is in thermal equilibrium with system c then that ta is equal to tc that means the temperature of system b is equal to the temperature of system c now according to zero law thermodynamics then system a is in thermal equilibrium with system b as a result the temperature ta is equal to tb now here in our case we know that a is in thermal equilibrium with c so ta is equal to tc b is in thermal equilibrium equilibrium with c so tb is equal to tc now from these two equations we get that tb should be equal to ta now this equation is something which is validated by the zeroth law of thermodynamics according to zeroth law of thermodynamics if a is in thermal equilibrium with c b is in thermal equilibrium with c then a should be in thermal equilibrium with b as a result tb should be equal to ta heat is a word which we have used a lot throughout this video so here i would like to give a microscopic interpretation of what a heat is now before going into that consider a wire a steel wire or any conducting wire if you apply a positive potential on one end of the wire and negative potential on the another end of the wire you see that the electric current flows between the positive and negative ends of the wire similarly if you have a positive pressure and a negative pressure you should see that it results in creation of a wind now similarly if you have two temperatures t1 and t2 then the energy which is in transfer between these two points is called as heat now now let us try to understand heat microscopically now for that consider a cylinder with air particles inside it so that has been described by these dot and one let one end of the cylinder be at temperature t1 and the another the other end of the uh, cylinder at temperature t2 and we are assuming that t1 is greater than t2 in the coming chapter the kinetic theory of gas we will see that the average mean speed of the particle is related to the temperature by average particle speed i mean that the average speed of particles in an region so if so if t1 is greater than t2 that means that the average kinetic energy of particles in the region in the region t1 a particle the average kinetic energy of the particles in the region t1 is greater than the average kinetic energy of particle in region t2 now since the t1 is greater than t2 these particles have higher kinetic energy now since these particles have higher kinetic energy they will collide with the particles which are nearby to them so in this collision they transfer the kinetic energy to the particles nearby them now the new nearby particles attain kinetic energy similarly again they will collide with the nearby particles and again they transfer kinetic energy and this process goes on continuing un until it reaches the other end in the end what happens is that the kinetic energy which was present with the particles in the region t1 reaches reaches to the other end that is t2 as a result the kinetic energy of the particle in the in the right end of the cylinder increases as a result the temperature t2 increases so this shows how the kinetic energy in in the left end of the cylinder was transferred to kinetic energy in the right end of the cylinder so the heat which was transferred from the re, from the t1 region to the t2 region can be compared to as the 
kinetic energy which was transferred from this region to this region so this gives the microscopic interpretation of heat internal internal energy is another, another thermodynamic variable and it is defined as the sum total of the kinetic and potential energies of the constant particles of the system so what do i mean by this now consider a system here with four particles 1 2 3 and 4 now the internal energy of this system is defined as u is equal to k1 plus v1 plus k2 plus v2 k3 plus v3 plus k4 plus v4 where k denotes the kinetic energy of the particle and v denotes the potential energy of the particle so internal energy is defined by u and it is the sum total of of all the kinetic energy and potential energy of the constants of the system now it's a macroscopic variable now you may have seen that kinetic uh, seen that internal energy is the sum total of the kinetic and potential energy here we are taking the individual kinetic energy and potential energy so you may question why how can this be a macroscopic variable then it should be a microscopic variable but since we are taking the sum of all the particles in the system it's a macroscopic variable even though we are considering the individual kinetic energy and potential energy but in the end we are taking the sum of all the particles so it's a macroscopic variable it depends on the pressure volume and temperature of the system now it's a state variable now what do i mean by a state variable a state variable by which i mean is that the internal energy of the system depends only on the present state that is it depends only on the pressure volume and tem temperature of the system at present now in detail we will discuss about what is a state variable when we compare it with, with the path variable but in order to do that you need a lot more to be learned so we will revisit what is a state variable later for the present time being you understand that internal energy is nothing but a state variable that means that the internal energy of the system depends on the pressure on the present pressure volume and temperature of the system now in the case of an ideal gas the internal energy depends only on t now why is that so in the ideal gas case what we do is that we neglect the potential energy of the system, of the particles so what happens is that the internal energy is nothing but the sum of only the kinetic energy the potential energies are eliminated now previously i have told that kinetic energy is related to temperature so since we are taking only kinetic energy the internal energy depends only on temperature in the case of ideal gas work done i think most of you will be already knowing what a work done is work done is nothing but energy so what we are going to do here is that we are going to calculate the work done by a system now for that consider a cylinder with gas molecules in it and having a piston and this is represented by this black shaded region and this piston is free to move let a be the cross section area of this cylinder now as you know these gas mo molecules will exert pressure on its boundaries so as a result this gas molecules will then exert a pressure on this piston as a result as a result the piston will move from its initial initial position to a different position so let the initial position of the piston be r and the new position of the piston b s and the displacement which it makes by this process is delta l now as you know pressure is equal to force by area as a result f is equal to p into a work done is equal to force into displacement 
so we have got, we have we have got here that f is equal to p into a so w becomes p into a into delta l now a into delta l is nothing but the change in volume so we get the expression for work done that is w is equal to p delta v now one should know that this expression for work done is only for a particular case mainly for what you will be dealing in the class 11 but when you go for higher studies you will understand that this need not be the work expression for the work done it depends on the system which we take now for the class 11th and class 12th you only need to understand that w is equal to p delta v now this is expression is only valid when change in volume is very small now let us see why this is only valid for change in volume which is very small now see the initial pressure here here the gas molecules are present closely now when it moves to the position s these gas molecules have a lot of space the space which it can occupy increases as a result the pressure it exerts on this piston decreases so we see that if delta v is large there can be a change in pressure so if there is a change in pressure then we cannot use this equation then this equation turns to the integral form that is w is equal to integral p dv from v1 to v2 now if you are in class 11th uh, you may not be knowing what in an integration is but you will learn in class 12th and you will really understand what this equation means but i will try to make you understand what this equation really means even though you don't understand that doesn't matter just take it for granted at present that w is equal to integral p dv from v1 to v2 now leave about this equation now now consider this equation now what what now what will be the equation if p varies c w now w is equal to p1 delta v by this i mean that let the initial pressure be p1 and the the volume which we change be delta v now when we change this volume the, to delta v the pressure changes and the new pressure becomes p2 and and during this pressure let us make another change in volume that is delta v then the pressure changes to p3 then then again we can proceed in the similar manner and we get the total work done is equal to p1 delta v plus p2 delta v plus p3 delta v and so on now i will try to make you understand what this equation is and how this is related to w is equal to integral v1 to v2 now consider a pv graph here i have taken the pressure along the y axis and volume along the x axis consider a small change in volume that is delta v you see that the corresponding pressure here is marked as p1 even though there are two lines here i have ma marked them to the same pressure p1 so why is it that so when this delta v becomes very small you see that this line becomes the first line as a result it has the pressure p1 so the area uh, now this thing you see here this two line and if you consider these two sides you see that this resembles similarly to that of the a rectangle so you know that the area of a rectangle is nothing but length into breadth so the area of this rectangle is nothing but the pressure length that is the p1 and the breadth that is delta v so that's the first term in the expression which we have seen earlier now similarly take another point point in this graph 
this graph basically shows how p is related to b now take another point here and again take a change in volume and the corresponding pressure to this change in volume is nothing but p2 again this resembles to a rectangle and the area of this rectangle is nothing but p2 into delta v that is the second term which we have seen similarly what we can do is that we can take all the points along this line and make delta v tends to zero that is we can make delta v more and more close to each other means more and more less and make this line close to this one and this will correspond to correspond to a particular pressure now if we take do this for the entire graph what we get is nothing but the area under this graph so that's what an integration is so this equation will change to this thing when delta v becomes very small and this thing and this p is continuous if this p is continuous and delta v becomes very small this graph turns out to be this and this is nothing but the area under this graph so what we understand here is that the work done is nothing but the area under the graph in a PV diagram. So this is a very important point which you should note. Work done is nothing but the area under the PV graph. Now we will stop the first part here and we will continue the discussion in the part.